Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here with me. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to win a hackathon. And as you've seen in the screen, I, I won um, the T-Mobile Amazon Big Data Hackathon for the best model. It, it was um, in March. And it was my very first hackathon. Um, in Mexico, those kind of thing doesn't exist really in the area where I, I was living. And when I came to the US, it was a nice surprise to win that one. And then later on in May, I went to become a judge and for expedition hacks. And it was so much fun because this was a different kind of hackathon. It was more on a structured data, and I, I was able to get the experience to become a judge and see many, many of the teams working. And a big thank you for Kim Yen because I'm going to present one uh, her project that was from the um, expedition hacks. And just by showing hands, how many of you have been in a hackathon? Yeah, thank you. And how much was the money that they were giving away? How much was the top price? Uh, I think it was 2000 2000 How much was the price of the hackathon? Yeah, the second one? Who was the other one who went to the hackathon? How was the top price? Nothing? <laughs> okay, so nowadays the hackathon prices are going up. I uh, start from 2000 1000 uh, up to 10000 And I got to know that there are hackathons that they even do the big price of $1.2 million. I heard about that one. And basically what I'm going to tell you is how to divide your project for the hackathon in three very simple steps. Is one is organization, process, and delivery. And hopefully at the end, you, all of you will be <laughs> have the chance to be a winner. So let's just start with the organization. It's very important when you start um, a hackathon project that you clear a specific uh, boundaries and expectations because sometimes uh, when the team is too big, not all the people contribute to the end goal and also it gets a little bit messy and uh, more, uh, more um, uh, in the process of this presentation I'm going to explain how small groups into a hackathon ended up winning um, more frequently than big groups. And then um, the process, let's, um, I'm going to subdivide them in three um, sub, uh, the areas. Is one is preparation. It's, I think preparation is one of the most important uh, tasks. Even when people, they just go to the hackathon and they just go to see what they can do at the moment. I think a big uh, key of, of having a big chance to win a hackathon, from my perspective, is what I've seen as a judge is to have a good framework of the preparation, then uh, the project framework is uh, to answer the business question, and then at the end, building the model. So which tool of technologies and technologies you need to be prepared before uh, going to the event? So basically, uh, the most important uh, from my perspective and what I've seen is you have to have your EC2 instance already in place. So um, try to make sure that everybody in the team has your EC2 instance, your S3, where you are going to put all the data set. And the Jupyter Notebook and Anaconda, you have no idea. Most of the teams, they were not prepared when they went to the hackathon with all those tools and they were uploading the program right there and there. Also, if, if, if before the event, they usually uh, post the, uh, what kind of data set you are going to be, do, um, be do, been doing, and sometimes it's already they have a pre-established data set. For some time, you need to do web scraping, so uh, have um, prepare in advance with some functions and. Going to the second sub step, it would be the project framework. Um, we, at the end, we are hacking for our customer, for our client, even if it is for a, 
a non-profit organization or for the government. At the end, we need to be very specific that we are solving uh, for our customer, for our client. In this case, I'm going to present you with the T-Mobile Hackathon. Um, a project that is uh, a private enterprise and then I'm going to move with the um, the National Geographic Agency that is a, a government um, project and and, uh, and that is an unstructured data set. So let's go back and uh, how to select your data set. Um, as I said and um, they usually present present you with uh, what they are going to give you as a data set or data frame it, uh, before the hackathon, they uh, do the announcement. So try to just to check it out um, and be prepared if it is going to be some data set from a cargo competition or if you need to do some um, web scraping. And also if you are a data scientist or you are not a data scientist, I recommend if you, do, you are not a data scientist, you go to the structured data set and just play around. But uh, if you get more complex, you can choose uh, the unstructured one. And that would be my recommendation. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to show you just um, a little bit of how I made the direct mail campaign. That is a project that I was, I was awarded the, the best model for that hackathon and it was so much fun. And these are some photos of the event we were presenting and that thing that is in the background is a pink unicorn. <laughs> we were presenting there and basically uh, we were given uh, several data sets and I just check out all the the the, the um, data sets and then uh, I realized that there was one about direct mail campaign and I remember that every time that I go to my to pick up my mail, I get a bunch of those kind of, of, of advertising, advertising, and one of, most of them were about the, some telecommunication or or internet. So I choose that one. It's just to be aware of the of what is out there in the market and what would be the business question just to be a little bit aware so i was lucky to choose that that one and then it was a 2000 features with 150,000 customers and the the business question i needed to resolve also they don't give you the business question you need to come up with the business question and, and with the solution so I propose who is more likely to respond to a direct mail campaign. And then a little bit of the algorithm. Uh, I get a sample of the data set from all the rows. And for the columns, you cannot get a straight sample. You need to apply an algorithm called PCA, Principal Component Analysis. And then I apply uh, the results of the Principal Component uh, Analysis with the 90% of the various variance of the total feature population. I apply a bunch of, of algorithms like um, logistic regression, I did um, decision tree and all of, you basically have to have prepared a function with all the, the, the normal machine learning algorithm and the best one for me was a random forest. Remember it's only one day or oh, eight hours of, of real time hacking. And so I just uh, choose the best responder, it was Random Forest, and then what I did is I, I activated an EC2 instance and then I, instead of uh, putting all the information from the PCA, I load all the data set and I run the Random Forest and it gave me a good prediction power. And I'm going to show you them. This is the repository and you can check it out. Um, and I put it very simple, it's just we load the data set, we apply PCA, and you can see the function, and I choose the 90% of the variance, I just put a graph to have something to print out. And 
then I use a uh, random forest and in here I put I got a score of 80% then but this is in uh, this um, project was in my local notebook I don't have the notebook from the Institute instance but I am planning to upload it uh, by next week when we have the release of all the, all the slides and notebook for PyData Seattle and now let's go to the second um, structured data set for the sector, second project. This was uh, very interesting because it was my very first time where I, I become a judge and I got a very nice input from the organizers where they told me that, um, that I, I did um, good questions for, for the, the presenters and I, I really I learned a lot about the process and I, I just came here to tell you from the perspective from a judge what we really care about that project in a hackathon. And this one is how to curate um, news for top national advisor. Imagine that you have your Trump advisor and you have to give the, him the top news of the world. And what the uh, teams were doing is trying, uh, but uh, we're trying to give them um, the most relevant news that they were doing every day. And for this, I have. I don't have photos, but I have a nice video. And um, please put a, check it out the video because I have one question, and the person who answers the question is going to be being given a book and um, Python and visualization. And it's only two minutes. It's very short video, but it's nice. Just for you to see the experience of a hackathon. The videos was good, huh? Like a telenovela. <laughs> I love it. So the question is, um, how many people and what was the gender of the winner team? Okay. Uh, three people, one woman, two men. Okay. So chica, the book. 
Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so in this, um, in the project uh, that I'm going to present from the hackathon, uh, is something similar that with the winner, uh, as the winner team, the only difference is that the winner team for the hackathon, just, they just added in the UI application um, and the, uh, a three phases score like red, yellow, and, and green. And if they add the, the top advisor of uh, would choose um, the application, they just dismiss or or accept the news that they really like from the algorithm that they were given. And so this. Um, the model of this project was that they they had to do web scraping from all the the news um, fit fit news, and then they with that information they used some text uh, text feature extraction with the TF IDF. They just basically do the big matrix of all the words and they ranking. Of course, before that they had to do some cleaning of the data set. The steam steam steamer is called, and then uh, they added uh, the advisors, and at the end they do some classification. and And the winner team they just added an extra uh, feedback point that it was the three phases from the direct input input from the advisor. And let's see the. Um, this is the notebook. And here you can see. And obviously, because it's a hackathon, nothing is clean. Everybody just throw your data set and do what you, you need to do in the moment. And so these are basically the news that you can see. Timestamp, and then in here uh, they add the, just the titles and the name of the column. In here they use um, the cleaning the data set and they use a, a steamer where they remove the punctuation and they do the, they reduce from caps down to lower caps and things like that. And now they added um, the roles. For example, um, the, this would be one advisor. The, I think it's the, um, the International Borders Advisor, uh, something like this, and uh, another, the Syria Advisor, and the North Korea Advisor, and now you have here the data set. And because um, they didn't, they manually selected um, some news and they added for each one of the advisors as a sample, as a reference for the model. And then in here, mm, then in here now they use the TF vectorizer, the text extraction, feature extraction, and now in here they started doing the naive base the application of the model. And then they pick all of the information to then utilize it in the model. And now you can see some of the suggestions and the, these are only the positive and in here they run it again and at the end they just give some format for the predictions they are going to give it to the top advisors and in here you have a bunch of news and now they call the results let's do let's check out the North Korea results and in here, um, this is what the top advisor will be in suggestion to, to a person like the President Trump to check out in the news that they were the top priority news about North Korea. So that was nice. And now the delivery. Um, basically, you ended up with five minutes of of presentation, just three minutes of real time presenting your project and two minutes of Q and A. And you have no idea when I was a judge to see how many people they did very interesting um, algorithms and very nice UI, but 
at the end of when they were presenting the project, they couldn't deliver the business question or be precise about what their project were talking about. Or even some of them, they talk about th that they had a proprietary algorithm and they had very high prediction power. But uh, at the end, they couldn't say uh, the basic pipeline of their algorithm. So it, the, at the end, we as a judge, we didn't have the certainty if they really had that very nice algorithm. So it's, it's, it's incredibly important that that, um, that in only five minutes you are, you are going to or, or either win the $10,000 and had uh, some of the results from the hard work that you did for one and a half days. And from my perspective, um, I'm going to give you, this is how we evaluate each of the teams. It's very basic, it's just a five-star ranking, and we just have those three minutes for us to evaluate the whole project and the whole hard work that you've been doing for the last one and a half days or two days, depending on the hackathon. And at the end, uh, we have a matrix like this. And in this case, uh, no lost news. This is just fake da data, by the way. Um, and sometimes it's very close to the ranking or that uh, we decide that just based on the presentation or the Q&A question, who is going to win. Or something that happened also is that even if the winner is on the top, we believe that the algorithm, for example, the proprietary algorithm doesn't exist because we don't have any proof and we cannot check it out with the, from the notebook. We, we totally dismiss that, um, that team and we put it at the bottom after we proceed to the delivery of, of talking about all the, the projects and teams. So, this is one of, of the example of the projects who presented, and now is the speech. Yeah, three minutes is like a, so fast. They passed so fast. Um, usually, um, in the teams, um, from our perspective as a judge and talking with people who organize constantly hackathon all over the United States or even around the world, they say the mostly the, the, the most efficient presentations come from small teams and also because they have more, more precise information, they get less messy around. And usually who give the presentation is the web developer or the data scientist. But I hugely recommend that uh, for the speech, it could be anyone, just to be clear with the following, uh, with, with some of these perspectives. Like in the interview, you, you need to be very clear. Uh, and first say your name and your title, because it's important for us as a judge to know which um, kind of people were involved in the team. Because if you, if you create a project and you don't have a data scientist, now we know that we, we should not ask you data scientist question or algorithms, complex algorithm questions. And that would be very relevant in that if you put that statement in the intro. And then very quickly, a few seconds later, just say your project, what was, the, what was your business question? And what is the answer was? And go very specific and then uh, mention your uh, algorithms. And if you said that you had very high prediction power, or if you had a very nice algorithm, Please, please don't say that it's proprietary. Because if you say that, uh, or even if it is proprietary, just give some idea of the pipeline that you use. You use PCA, then you use Random Forest, or you use um, uh, Web Scraper, and there's a uh, feature text extraction, and then Naivebase. That's all. You don't need to give some information about the feature engineering you did for that algorithm to be so precise and nice. And also, uh, it's nice for us as a judge to hear how your project would be scaling and, and how would be the input. 
the reason the first uh, winner for the ten thousand uh, dollar one it was because he had for a scaling he had the three phases and it was so minor but just three phases that was going to be the input from any source of crowdsourcing that they would put this news sucks this news is good this news is working this is fake news or something like that but you at least you have the the input and you you can do some balance of your model with that inf extra information scaling information from the crowdsource and at the end your demo your demo could be a, a dummy one or it could be just a powerpoint presentation presentation as far as you had very strong business question algorithm and scaling and if you don't have that you can do something very nice and like a very the three phases ui uh, um, and also it's very important that you reiterate the business question and all of this in three minutes so you are going to talk very fast but you're going to be very precise and then for the q a I, I, strongly, I strongly suggest um, that um, the Q&A would be the data scientist of the person who developed the whole pipeline. Because uh, what, I, what we heard um, during the presentation of those team uh, during the hackathon is that sometimes the presenter was not the real the the true person who know all the tweaks and tweets of the projects and even when they presented a nice algorithm he couldn't explain beyond what they had what model they use or what um, or what interface they they would use and how they would improve it so I highly suggest that for the Q&A to, to switch the microphone if the presenter is somebody else than the data scientist of the web developer. And for the Q&A, um, this is another very nice uh, pipeline to follow is get to know your judges. For example, if somebody as me as a data scientist is asking you a question about your algorithm and is asking you about the naive base, don't tell not don't tell that the naive base is a classifier. No 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 you should tell something about the the posterior that you use, something very insightful about your algorithm algorithm because I, I, I'm talking about that data scientist as a judge of if you have somebody else that is into for example we have somebody from um, she code and and Django girl and she was asking more question about and how would you scale this project and how you make it more friendly for the user user friendly and just get to know your judges and then um, for the data scientists um, that are in your team uh, explain your algorithm and I explain how you build a scale uh, and your algorithm in the future with more information and for the web developer uh, your uh, information about your application and the interface so basically I'm telling you the same that for the Q&A just have those two guys in here and have the microphone and and you will be fine I think from my perspective and if you end up being a winner and you win $10,000 so you practically will have a lot of money to go to party. And please, please, we are so much fun. Please invite us. <laughs> Thank you. That will be all from my side. Thank you. Questions for Louisa? Are we on Patrick? Patrick. OK. No? Hold on. Sorry, guys. There we go. All right. Go ahead. Uh, so you were mentioning how in the project stage, in the presentation, you kind of go over your business question. And then in the demo, you go over it again. And I was kind of curious, could you give me like a short example of how you would do it in step two in project versus step three in the demo to like kind of like figure that out better? Um. I'm sorry, could you, yes, um, So you were mentioning that in the presentation, when we give it to the judges, that oh, yes. 
when you're presenting the pro first you do your intro and then you do your project and you show the demo and you said okay when you're explaining what your project does and you use your dummy data and stuff like that you know um, you want to go over the business question in the project stage and then the demo you want to cover that again yes. and I was curious if you could like explain to me like what are you covering again that you like what do you suggest we go over this time but in the demo stage oh it's just because um, in, during the project presentation, you start with the business question and how you answer, and then you explain, ah, oh, we use this algorithm and this pipeline, and then we ended up with this result. And now the, let's play the demo. And in the demo, uh, it's, it's usually, an, usually an application, then you, you, you do your task, but you have to reiterate. And now with this, this demo, we are solving these business questions, is what I mean. That you close your three minute speech saying what you are resolving with your project. Yes. Other questions? Oh, way in the back, hang on a second. <laughs> I was wondering if you had any tips for like getting a team together and like practicing before the actual competition, what kind of things we should do. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So what I would recommend is that you keep your team very uh, small, like two or three pe people at the most, and also try to, if you want to do some uh, some unstructured data set, try to have your um, your function for web scraping already um, already in place and just call them and try to do some sample data is what I would recommend. And also what I really would recommend that everybody in your team should have Anaconda, should have the Jupyter Notebook because if the data scientists finish with their algorithm, they want to send to all of the people to get to check out the algorithm and to to get to just to talk about how how you can improve very quickly and you you pipeline. So that is what I, from my perspective, my answer. Anything else? Oh, one more. Hang on. Um, another question about the team, uh, do most people come in with a team or if you don't, you know, maybe know a web developer, like can solo people kind of meet up and form their teams there? So um, mostly the team already comes uh, in, uh, already with your friends or you're somebody that you know. but. Uh, Sometimes you get to meet people over there in the place, and just for this, the winner of the um, of the hackathon, um, last hackathon expedition hack, they were they just met over there, so it could be either way, and and you can. A hackathon is a big surprise for me, and, and I think. Every time you go to a very nice hackathon where they give you food, it's like a big party and you end up making friends with some of the people. And it would be awesome if you don't have a team or you don't have any people that they can go with you, that you just crash the party and try to connect with somebody and try to make something. Even if you know yeah, that you don't have a possibility to win because that is what happened to me. I thought, oh, I'm not going to win. I'm just going to have fun and create something. I ended up winning the best model. So you can, you have a chance. Everybody has a chance. If you, you just go on and have fun and connect with people. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Another round for Luisa, please.